Hey everyone, today I want to take deep down into how I make mobile game prototypes and why testing early is the best thing you can do as a solo developer or a small team. We'll cover how I built in 4-6 weeks, what metrics I look at and why I don't focus on monetization first and how this approach helps me avoid sinking months into the wrong idea. If you're serious about game development, especially in mobile where attention spans are short and competition is brutal, this system will save you a ton of time, money and stress. So let's start with this. Why starting with the prototype instead of building full game? Because most game ideas sound better in your head than they feel in the hands of players. It's easy to convince yourself something is fun, but the reality often hits different once real users get involved. And I've learned this the hard way. I used to commit to a big projects way too early and I'd only find out months later that the core idea wasn't really engaging. Now I take the opposite route. I build fast, test early and only move forward when the data tells me it's worth it. Each prototype I build takes around 4 to 6 weeks. That's my sweet spot. It's enough time to create something playable and meaningful, but not so long that I get too emotionally attached. The goal is to build the complete gameplay loop with enough content to test engagement. Not polish, not art, not monetization, just gameplay. This limited time frame keeps scope under control and forces me to focus on what actually matters. Is the core loop satisfying? Are people playing more than once? Are they coming back? And once prototype is out in the wild, I start tracking player behavior immediately. But here's the key, I don't worry about monetization yet. Early monetization just gets in the way of understanding if the game is actually fun. So what do I track? Here is my core set of metrics. Day 1 retention. I want to see 30 or more percent of players coming back the next day. That's the baseline signal that people are at least a little hooked. Session length. I try to make sure that there is at least 40 minutes of content. If the game can't hold someone for a decent chunk of time, you can't expect them to return. Content completion. I want at least 15-20% of players to reach the end of what I've built. That means the loop is strong enough to keep people playing through. These numbers give me a clear picture of whether the game has a long-term potential and whether it's worth building out further. Now, how do I actually track all this? What tools am I using to collect and analyze player behavior? Right now, I use Game Analytics. It's lightweight, free, and really use it to integrate into Unity. You can set up custom events, track funnel progression, and view metrics like retention, session length, and level completion without needing to build a full backend. Before that, I used Firebase, which is also solid, especially if you're already familiar with Google ecosystems. Both tools are great, but for quick prototyping I found Game Analytics to be the fastest and most convenient to get started with. Alright, so you've built your prototype, integrated analytics, now let's talk about actually getting players. This is one of the most important and most overlooked parts of the process, actually getting enough people to play your game so your metrics mean something. If you just rely on friends, discord groups or reddit communities, your data are going to be biased. People in your circles are usually more forgiving, more patient and frankly more interested in helping you. But real players in the wild, they don't care, they'll bounce instantly if something feels off and that's exactly what you want to learn from. The best way I found to get quality test users is by running small ad campaigns, usually through Facebook ads or Google app campaigns. Here's the logic. If you're going to test a mobile game, test it in real mobile market environment. These platforms let you target actual users who download games on Android and iOS all the time and you can choose by age, region, gender, interest and device type. Uh, with Facebook ads, I typically create a short gameplay video or creative uh, or static image that explains the game quickly. I aim for about 10-15 seconds, something that shows the core mechanic right away. Then I send users directly to the App Store listing. On Google's site, you can use Google App Campaigns, which run your ads across YouTube, Google Play, Search and the display networks. The targeting is less customizable than Facebook, but it's very efficient once it's optimized. 
As for budgets, you don't need to go crazy. I usually spend around $50 to $100 per test campaign. That's enough to get maybe a few hundred installs depending on country targeting and cost per install. And honestly, that's all you need to start seeing retention curves, funnel behavior and drop off points. If you're launching globally or tier one countries like United States or United Kingdom, expect to pay more per install. If you're just trying to test mechanics and behavior, you can also run ads in lower cost regions like India, Brazil or Southeast Asia to stretch your budget. Just to make sure to factor in the player behavior differences across regions, not every audience plays the same way, but even low cost campaigns can give you really valuable insights on how players engage with your game. After launching, I run one or two iterations. I look at where people are dropping off, onboarding, level 2, level 5, whatever. Then I tweak. Maybe I shorten the tutorial, adjust difficulty or clarify mechanics. But I limit this to 2-3 round max. Because here's the truth. If the metrics still don't improve after that, it's probably not the player's fault. It's the idea. And this process makes it so much easier to let go of projects. Why? Because I didn't spend six months building this. I didn't build a full backend. I didn't add every feature I dreamed of. It's just a prototype. It's just disposable by design. And I learned what I needed and now I can move on to the next idea without guilt. This mindset shift is huge. Instead of feeling like I failed, I treat every prototype as data gathering mission. Some are dead ends, and that's okay, they are still valuable. And here is the twist. Just because I'm moving on doesn't mean the prototype is useless. Once I finish testing and decide not to expand the game, I'll often go back and add basic monetization layer. It could be rewarded ads or a simple in-game purchase or a banner, nothing fancy. But over time, even these discarded games can bring in small stream of passive income. It's not life-changing money, but if 5 or 10 prototypes each bring in a little, it adds up. It's like recycling your creative experiments into something useful. This whole approach works because it aligns with the reality. Mobile players make decisions fast. If your game doesn't hook in the first session, you're out. Prototyping and testing helps you catch those failures before they cost you months of dev time. You stay lean, agile and data-driven. You avoid sunk cost traps, you build better games faster and with more confidence. And even the game that don't pass your internal metrics might still turn into small earners or valuable learning experience. So let's summarize. Build fast in 4-6 weeks, track retention, session length and funnel completion. Don't monetize early, iterate a couple of times. If it still doesn't work, let it go. And maybe, just maybe, add a light monetization on the way out. This system has helped me stay focused, keep momentum and avoid burnout. I hope it gives you something to think about too. So as always, like, subscribe and leave a comment if you are interested in more topics like this. And keep testing, keep learning and keep making prototypes.